All right, joining us now with more, the author of the bestseller, Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America, Amazon.com, bookstores all around the country. Am I understanding a bestseller? Is that true, Senator? Uh, that, that's right. Two weeks in a row, we're, we're at the top of the bestseller list, and it makes a great, great Christmas gift. So go, go buy it for your friends and loved ones. They'll enjoy it. It's fun, and, it, and, and, and it's interesting it's and well lays written. out a battle plan for taking the country back. It really does. It really was well-written. Uh, I urge people that would be a good Christmas gift for, for people. Let me ask you this, Senator. Let's get your reaction to Biden, you know, yeah. apologizing on the issue of not taking these numbers from Hamas. Why, why would he be apologizing to anybody for that? Well, look, it's important to understand Joe Biden has been the most anti-Israel president the United States has ever had. From the very beginning of the Biden administration, this administration has undermined the government of Israel at every step. They've done so systematically. They've done so at a granular level. He is surrounded by radical anti-Israel activists. In his administration, his lead negotiator on Iran, Rob Malley, who's been fired, had his security clearance revoked because presumably of violations sharing secrets somehow with Iran. His top three advisors, or three of his top three advisors, were Iranian operatives working for the Iranian foreign ministry, working essentially as spies on behalf of the government of Iran, undermining the U.S. government. Since October 7th, since the October 7th attack began, the Biden administration at every stage has worked to undermine Israel. The, as the attack was happening on the night of October 7th, the State Department tweeted out a call for Israel not to engage in retaliation, saying violence never solves anything. They did that at three in the morning. Three in the morning, I responded, said this was disgraceful. Whoever wrote this tweet should be fired. Within minutes, they deleted the tweet. The next day, Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, sent another tweet saying he'd just spoken with the Turkish foreign minister and Israel should engage in an immediate ceasefire. Again, I blasted it online, said this was disgraceful. Again, they deleted it. Since then, Joe Biden has flown to Israel, urged Israel do not retaliate against Hamas. Since then, Tony Blinken has flown to Israel, urged Israel do not retaliate against Hamas. At every stage, they are pushing for Israel not to eradicate Hamas, for, for Israel to engage in a ceasefire, for Israel to engage in a pause. And the amazing thing is, Sean, as much as the Biden administration has undermined Israel, the radical left is protesting Biden, saying you're not pro-Hamas enough, because that today is the state of the Democrat Party. They have a viciously anti-Semitic radical left that is pounding this White House for not doing even more to hurt the state of Israel. Let me ask you the question that I was asking uh, Secretary Pompeo uh, earlier. Senator, I think you and I probably feel the same way on this. I'm imagining we do. Uh, I don't like this deal. I don't like a ceasefire. I don't like the idea that three prisoners are given in exchange for innocent children. However, I know in my heart, and I know what I think in your heart, that if that was the deal that was taken and it would result in the release of innocent citizens in Israel getting released, and even innocent Americans, I'd probably want to take that deal. How do you feel? Because I'm, I'm yeah, conflicted look, look, about I, I, it. I, I'm conflicted on this, and this deal was, was extracted in a horrible situation. 58 hostages have now been released. And I will say, first of all, praise God. We, we have reason to give celebration and thank God that 58 hostages, women, little children have been released. That is a wonderful thing. I'll tell Amen. you, I, I've sat, Sean, in my office with, with the families of, of hostages, I've heard the horrible stories of, of people who Hamas terrorists brutalized. And, and, and listen, when it comes to this deal, I understand why Israel entered into it. I think Prime Minister Netanyahu, I think he is truly an historic figure. I know him well. You know him well. I, I think he appreciates the weight of history on his, on his shoulders. And he made this deal. This deal has multiple negative consequences. One of the consequences in is in exchange for these hostages being released, Israel has released roughly 150 Palestinians. Some significant number of those were involved in, in terrorism and likely will return to terrorism. So they are releasing people who will try to kill more innocent civilians. Secondly, this pause. The pause in, in the military attack on Gaza means Hamas has time to rebuild. They're allowing roughly 300 trucks a day to come in from Egypt, 
with aid, including fuel. That fuel is restocking Hamas. The consequence of this is Hamas will be more difficult to defeat. That both of those are serious negative consequences of this deal. That being said, the Israeli war cabinet voted to approve this deal. And I understand why bringing those hostages home is a major accomplishment. And, and, and I think it's critical as we bring those hostages home that we do not allow this pause to become fuel for leftists and the Biden administration to pummel Israel and say, do not return to the task of eliminating Hamas. The government of Israel has said they're going to utterly eradicate Hamas. And if and when they do so, that will be good for Israel. That will be good for America. That will be good for the world. And, and we need to, when the hostages have come home, we need to return to the task of eliminating these monsters that committed these atrocities. That has to happen. Do you agree with my assessment that Gaza, Lebanon, and Iran have to all be dealt with and the terror tunnels, of course, eliminated? Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and look, Hamas is the first priority because Hamas committed these, these horrific atrocities. And, and let me stop and say, all right, so tomorrow morning I'm going to the Senate. I'm doing something I'm really not looking forward to, is, which is I'm going to watch about an hour of footage that the Israeli government has put together of the atrocities these terrorists have committed. I'm going to see, tragically, terrorists raping young women, raping children, murdering children. I, I, I've seen little snippets of it. It makes you physically sick. We know these terrorists, they literally put babies in ovens and raped their mothers while they cooked the babies alive. This and, is and evil, and we've got to stop it. it but, it's, but well, the, it's nearly a 50-minute video, and then yes. they wanted to chronicle all of, all of those atrocities. You know, that, yes. that is, you know, like Nazi Germany in our time. I wish it's I had more time. It's important that Senator, the truth be known. Oh, put up your book. Uh, congratulations on it being a bestseller. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.